What's up everybody? Welcome back to Yuppie Problems. A lot of people have been asking me how I stay safe living in Chicago. Just for context, I live in the Gold Coast, like Old Town area of Chicago. So you've got the Loop, which is where the financial district is, and then you've got all of these little neighborhoods around it. Every major city is experiencing increased crime, carjackings, robberies, all of the above. Lived in the same place in Chicago for about 10 years, but even before I lived here, I was always coming to the city when I was growing up because I had cousins living here, we had family here, we were always coming in the city for events. We're city people, and I thought that I would share if you're going to visit a city, or even if your city was safe before and now you feel like there's increased crime in the area, these are some ways that you can stay safe, that I have stayed safe, and these are kind of like city secrets. I guess you could say. So the very, very first thing that I'll say is I never carry a purse with me anywhere. If I'm going to CVS, if I'm going to the grocery store, if I'm going out to the bars, to the restaurants, you will never see me carrying a purse. Instead of a purse, I always will wear a jacket or a vest or something that has inside pockets. So it's just a piece of clothing that has pockets on the inside for your cell phone, your wallet, your keys, Kleenex, sunglasses, so many pockets. I think that the, po the jacket that I have, I'll link it down below, I think it has 10 or 12 pockets and it has a pocket for my sunglasses and it even has like a little bungee cord with sunglass cleaning cloth. It's got a little bungee cord for my keys and then it's got all of these inside pockets that I can literally fit a nook in, I can fit a notebook in it, definitely my wallet, definitely my cell phone. I highly recommend getting it and then anytime you go anywhere you don't have to worry about somebody seeing you with a purse and seeing you as a target. A lot of people will also have mug wallets. It's basically a fake purse so it's not your actual purse or it's a fake wallet. You know those cards that you get in the mail or something that are just like dummy cards? You put like dummy or expired cards in that wallet, old driver's license or something or an old ID, and you literally, you make it look like an actual wallet and you might put like $100 or $200 in cash in the wallet. You carry around this fake wallet and it's called mug money. Mug money has been around since like the 70s. Like my mom told me about mug money when I was growing up, but it's basically just like $200 that if you got mugged, they're satisfied enough with what they're getting from you that they just move on. Uh, sometimes there's like frustration if they mug you and then you say, I don't have any money, then they might get even more frustrated and they might not believe you. But if you just say, oh my God, okay, I have $200 and they'll be like $200. Okay, let's go. Now, like I said, I don't carry that with me if I'm just going to CVS or if I'm just going to the grocery store or if I'm just going to dinner, you know, right outside my house. But if I'm going to be going like an extra long distance or going to a neighborhood that I'm not super familiar with, then I will carry something like that with me just because I'm not familiar with the area and when you are familiar with the area you know you know which corners to avoid even if you're on a northwest corner versus a northeast corner there's a difference of the corners sometimes on that same note making absolutely sure that you know every single intersection between point a and point b where you're going what those intersections are like what the people are like, uh, what it's like at the time of day that you're gonna be walking on that intersection. And this is something that only locals really know. So if you're gonna be visiting a city, 100% reach out to somebody even if it's on LinkedIn or some random social media site, you can just say, hey, like I'm coming to the city. Can you as a local tell me, is this like a good intersection or not? If I was gonna go to point A to point B, which way would you recommend? Ask the person who works at your hotel, which route do you recommend that I take? The person who lives there is gonna know you don't wanna go on this one corner that has that one Walgreens. You can just go a block west and have a totally different experience. If you do plan on taking transportation in the city, I recommend taking cabs over Ubers or Lyfts for several reasons. The first reason is that Ubers are more likely to be carjacked. Specifically, black SUVs are more likely to be carjacked. It's the number one type of car that carjackers are going after are the black SUVs. They are using those stolen cars to use in their drive-by shootings or to use in their robberies and to use um, in their uh, retail thefts. I think that's the right way to, I, can't, I don't think we're supposed to call it looting anymore. 
they're using those black SUVs. A cab is a smaller car. It doesn't have blackout windows. You know, it has like a cab light. It's super, super obvious of a car, whereas a black SUV kind of blends into traffic more than a cab does. You really are not going to find any carjacking crimes that involve cabs. Cab drivers have to work super hard for their medallions. So every cab has a number that is registered with the city and it actually has a direct feed to 911. So if there is an emergency, the cab driver can just click a button and it goes straight to 911 dispatching. Whereas an Uber driver doesn't have that luxury. He's just a citizen with a car and he would have to call 911 the old fashioned way. Or if you went through the Uber's 911 system, then you're bypassing the whole dispatch. So cabs have more of a direct line to emergency responders and they're just not targeted. They're just not targeted. And the next reason that I would suggest a cab over an Uber is that cab drivers know the city and know the blocks like the back of their hand. Not only that, not only do they know, oh, this road has all green lights uh, between three and five. This road has like interchanging stoplights and green lights. So it's not, it's going to take longer on that side, but they also know what's happening in the city at the time you're getting in the cab. So for example, the other night I was in downtown Chicago and I was at an event and I got to that event at like six o'clock and at 1107, just as the event was wrapping up, there were huge mobs and riots happening just literally right next door to us, like on the block next to us. But we were in the event, so we didn't know this was happening. And yes, I'm on Citizen. Yes, I was getting alerts for other things, but I didn't get an alert about the mob or the riot. And there were literally hundreds of kids just rioting right next to us. And like I said, we, we just had no idea. And then there was actually a shooting right outside of our event. It was like floor to ceiling windows and we could see the entire shooting happening. We came out of the bar and the kid who was shot, you can't see it in this video because there's somebody sitting next to him, but the person who was shot was literally right there on the curb, bleeding. The ambulance came right in front of our event, picked him up. Um, and of course I did get an alert on Citizen for the shooting, but I didn't get the alert for the mobs. And so once I could get a cab, once a cab could actually come in because the police blocked off the whole, um, you know, the whole street. And I really think that if it were an Uber, first of all, Ubers have trouble finding you when there's not a shooting and the police don't have the whole block blocked off. Either way, the cab driver was very obviously a cab. Whereas if an Uber driver was trying to get through that police tape, the police might be like, whoa, 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 no, you're a regular car. You are not coming through. This road is blocked off. Whereas the cab has the cab light on it, it's very clearly coming to pick somebody up who is in the crime scene. And the police actually let the cab driver into the crime scene to come and get me from the door because I was stuck in there. And I literally told the police, I'm like, I'm stuck in here. I don't want to walk to meet the cab because of everything that's happening. And they let the cab driver in. So there's a few advantages there. And also, back to my original point, the cab driver knew that these mobs and riots were happening because he was out driving around while I was in the event. And so he knew to avoid those roads and to come, you know, one way or another. Ubers can, can know that too, but a lot of times the Ubers are following their GPS and the GPS will just take them every which way. Whereas a cab just knows, he knows which roads are one ways. He knows which ways are two ways. He knows how to avoid a certain area and how to do a little loop around. You don't have to explain it to him and it just works out really well, um, better with a cab than an Uber. If you don't have the app called Curb and you are in a city setting, definitely download Curb. It works the same way that Uber or Lyft works, but it brings you cabs, not Ubers and not Lyfts. If you are going to take a cab or an Uber or a Lyft or anything, definitely always, and this applied to before the cities had increases in crime, but always look up the route from point A to point B before you get in a cab, Uber, Lyft, whatever. Make sure you look up the route and then tell the driver, I would like to go this route. Now, again, this doesn't apply if you have been in an event and you don't know what's going on outside. This is if you're like going to the event and you're able to assess what's happening on the roads. And it, this is like kind of a different scenario where you would come in and say, I wanna take this route, but mainly just knowing what routes are available and which routes your driver should be taking because sometimes like i said an uber might follow a gps and it might take them completely the wrong way they might take a wrong turn you might end up in a neighborhood or an intersection that is not a good intersection so it's just a good thing to know where you're going and which routes to take you might need to be a backseat driver for the driver and that's 100 percent okay my next tip is to never walk with earbuds in your ears 
These noise canceling earbuds that people put in their ears are just magnets for robberies. If somebody sees you with that and walking like you're not paying attention and looking on your phone. If you're looking on your phone and you've got noise canceling earbuds in, they come in for you. If I'm gonna listen to something, it's gonna be one earbud, it's not gonna be noise canceling, and my phone is going to be in my jacket. And if I wanna switch between music or stations or something, I'll like quickly look at my watch and do it. But for the most part, when I'm out walking the dog or walking somewhere, I am not distracting myself with anything. And not only does it make you a target when you're doing that, but it also makes you unaware of moves that you need to make to avoid potential danger. So when I'm going and walking, I live like a few blocks from a huge row of restaurants. So a lot of times I'll just walk to the row of restaurants or I'll walk to the dentist or you know, you're walking everywhere. Before I go, I always take out my earbuds and put them in my pocket. My phone is in my inside pocket. I'm not looking at it. I'm not looking at my watch. And as I'm walking, I am constantly looking and doing a scan of the area. I'm looking for suspicious people. I'm looking for somebody that looks out of place. And if I see something happening on one side of the sidewalk, I cross the sidewalk and I go another way. I'm also always checking behind me. And you don't have to be paranoid. I'm not saying be paranoid. I'm saying do a scan when you walk out of your house. Is somebody behind me? Is somebody behind the door? Because a lot of times you can open the door and somebody can be right by the door as you open it so you don't see them if you're going to the right. So every time you open a door, look to the left, look behind the door, go on your way, and be checking and making sure that nobody is following you, nobody is waiting in an alley. Like sometimes I've been walking and there's been stairs that kind of go up into bushes, you know, or like little alley stairs. As you're approaching a place like that, step further away from the alley so that you're closer to the street and kind of look and see because a lot of times people will kind of hide in between you know door frames or in between alleys and as somebody walks by that's when they'll grab from the person so if you can step away from the alley or away from doors walk closer to the street you're going to avoid somebody who's hiding in there trust me i have seen that as i've been walking to church where i'm all dressed up somebody's been hiding and i just walk i'll even there's been times i've even gone on the street and walked on the sides of the cars like it's my car walking between the cars and the street to avoid being on the sidewalk so it's not paranoia it's having situational awareness and avoiding potential dangers and that is going to be the absolute biggest thing more than not carrying a purse more than not looking at your phone more than not having your earbuds in is going to be thinking ahead and looking ahead and avoiding intersections and situations that could potentially be an issue. Now, a lot of people have also asked me, do you have pepper spray? Do you want, what do you walk with? I don't recommend pepper spray for a few reasons. Number one, if there's a breeze and there's always a breeze and you spray that pepper spray, it's gonna come right back in your own face. That's, that's happened to a few of my friends and it's actually really funny to like talk about it now, but it's not a funny thing when you're in the moment and pepper spray goes into your face. They actually make a product called pepper gel. Gel will spray the pepper spray out in a more pointed direction. So if there is a breeze because there's gel in it, the breeze isn't going to bring it back the way just the spray would. So if you are going to carry something, I recommend carrying pepper gel spray and I'll link that down below. Now I actually do carry this, but not for people. I carry this for the coyotes because I walk Tinley all the time where there's a bunch of coyotes. The only way that I think that the pepper spray is effective to have on you is if you take off the cap and keep it in your pocket. And if you're walking somewhere that's sketchy and you know that it's sketchy before you get there, you've got your fake purse, you've got your mug money, definitely have one hand on a pepper spray bottle in your pocket as you walk. You know, people have their pepper spray just in their purse with the cap on. And of course, if somebody comes at you in two seconds, you're not going to be like, hold on a second. I've got to get my pepper spray. Where is it? You want to have it ready to go. You want to have your hand in your pocket with your finger on the spray. As it happens, you're ready to go. So if you aren't going to carry pepper spray with you, have that mindset of you're only really going to use it you're only going to take it out and put it in your pocket when you're walking from point a to point b and i also really believe that when you are prepared like that with your hands in your pocket looking around you give off this like aura 
of don't f with me you just give off that vibe there's been a lot of times where i've been walking somewhere and there's been tons and tons of sketchy people and then two minutes after i walk somewhere somebody's assaulted and i really believe that it wasn't me because i looked so prepared and i had this vibe of i'm, I'm ready for you don't do it do it do it i dare you i'm ready for you don't do it do it i dare you you know what i mean <laughs> whereas so when someone sees me walking by with my hands in my pocket walking towards the street looking around you know aware of what's going on looking like i'm ready to pounce if somebody is going to come at me then i'm somebody that that person's going to avoid and then if somebody comes after me who's got earbuds in and they're scrolling on their phone walking slow that's the person who gets assaulted and my last tip is to get a dog i mean obviously my door is always locked it's always dead bolted i've got cameras in here but nothing beats having the dog I hope that these tips were helpful. I don't even remember how many I gave you, but I'll like sum it up in the title or something. And I'll put in the description all of the gear that I usually have as well. I do also have an alarm, like a safety alarm that you pull and it makes a really loud noise. So when it's really bad weather outside and it's snowing or it's super windy, I mean, we have a lot of bad weather days in Chicago. If it's a bad weather day like that, then you better believe I'm holding my alarm in my pocket instead of pepper spray and it just makes a really loud noise and draws a lot of attention to you and it's just another option um, but i i mean i think the biggest thing is being aware of your surroundings and avoiding certain corners and intersections that's it those are my tips i hope that these were helpful if you like this type of content let me know by hitting the thumbs up button and subscribing to the channel or leave in the comments below things that you really liked about this video or didn't like about this video most of the time i'm making home videos but like i said i'll just make a video wherever the spirit moves me so it's moving me towards safety videos and maybe my next one will be like staying safe in a hotel or something like that so let me know if you liked it, and I hope that everybody has a very safe January. Hey, wait! Wait, 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 wait! If you like this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out to have an extra subscriber and an extra thumbs up. Okay, bye! We could drive along an ocean reflecting the sun or make a bed of green atop a wide open scene Under a canvas of blue I would draw everything